This is it. We have arrived at our stopping point for this series. There is, of course, no perfect time to end a series. There's always going to be that question of what could come next with the team that we have. Of course, we're always going to have prospects, and we do still have one hell of a foundation for what could be a contender for years to come. I mean, again, this Ottawa series has been anything but predictable, not only because of the random Melnick factors, but also because plans have consistently changed, and we have talked about that a lot. You know, goaltending-wise, we thought this was the year of Jesper Wallstead. We brought back Kemper because no one else really signed him, and what a decision that proved to be. But you talk about what could happen in the future. Wallstead, is he the guy? Is he not? We're never really going to find out, unfortunately. Of course, you know, in the minors, we have some other goalies who could make it. We got a lot of decent trading pieces here as well. End of the day, though, it comes down to the fact that NHL 21 comes out on EA Play, which used to be EA Access, in less than a week and a half. NHL 21, despite the fact that it's about a month later than scheduled, is still upon us. And we gotta, we gotta get ready for 21. We gotta prepare. And like I said, a cup final, there really is no better time than that to say this is a definitive end. You know, this team, like I said, has struggled at times. It's been an interesting team in that, you know, you look at the constantly evolving nature of it. We've still made it to conference finals. We were much better sooner than we thought we would be. But you look here now as well, another reason why I think I'm good with calling it after this season. Eric Brandstrom, as it stands, doesn't want to come back. Shea Theodore is leaving. Like, this is probably the last shot with this core. I mean, either Brandstrom, we'd match an offer, or we'd let him walk. Who knows what that deal would look like. We were talking about whether or not Thomas Shabbat would end up leaving this team, and the argument of whether or not he should or shouldn't is certainly there. Uh, it's a little bit of a tough call, I would say, uh, just because he's actually had a pretty decent postseason, and we'll look at the points in a minute. But obviously, you know, you look at some of the other, you know, some of the other guys that we still have on this team and what this team could be in the future. It sucks to not know how good Ruslan Datsuk is going to be, right? Like Sloan, what's going to happen with him? And then, of course, you get to the forwards. And we've talked about it a lot this postseason. You know, what was going to happen with the Kachucks? Brady would certainly stay if I could keep him. Matthew Kachuk would probably go. Uh, you look at what signing Taylor Hall did for this franchise. You look at Nico Heischer being here. We thought this was going to be Lafreniere and then Cody Glass. That's not how it worked out at all. Evgeny Malkin has been incredible. And if we do win the Stanley Cup in this episode, he is a big part of the reason as to why. Uh, Matthew Kachuk, again, incredibly disappointing obviously too we signed Ovechkin we signed Crosby I mean it's it's insane what's what's changed with this team what we're never going to see what we have seen and what we may be about to see so many talking points so like I said there's never a great time to end a series I feel like I've said like I've said uh, or like I said a lot already in this uh in this video and I apologize for that there's never a good time to end a series is always going to be the question of what comes next. But if there was a good time to end a series, it would be with the Stanley Cup victory or a loss, which would be the most Ottawa thing, I would say. So with that, this is the team that we are going to take into this All-Canadian Cup Final against the Vancouver Canucks. Top line now a plus five. I have switched Ovi from a sniper to a power forward for the sake of the extra chemistry. He has three goals in 16 games. Obviously not much of a sniper anymore, despite that shooting category still being probably the best in the game. He is centered by Nico Heischer, who again has been incredible. You know, we got him for a bargain price. You look at the Cody Glass move that we were kind of forced into, and then we sat there and thought, okay, this isn't going to work. Do we cash out on Glass already? We did, because Nico was available, and he has been exactly what this team needed. And then, of course, Shane Pinto. Not as ridiculous as he had been last year in the same amount of games, had a few more assists, but still, what a playoff performer Shane Pinto has been. Second line, Brady Kachuk has been outstanding 
is the only way to put it. I mean, regular season numbers over the past couple years have dropped from where we started this series. But in the playoffs, I mean, my God, what an incredible effort. And hopefully that continues. And then there's Evgeny Malkin, who I I can't even explain this again. We signed Gino. We signed Ovi. uh, We signed Crosby to just take up cap space. We played Malkin in the AHL for 36 games. And then I said, okay, these younger guys, these younger prospects aren't quite working out. Let's call up Gino. That might that move might have won us a cup. And uh, when I see me, I mean, there was a lot of people calling in the comments to, to call him up. And I'm glad we did. And then, of course, Taylor Hall, where, like I mentioned, everything, every bit of success we've had in this series probably started uh, with the year one struggles and then the signing, the subsequent signing of Taylor Hall in that off season. I mean, what he has been for this team, you know, three 40 goal seasons, never scored under 32. You look again at what he did in that first year playoff run where we made it to the conference final for the first time. Of course, he's had some injury troubles at times, but Taylor Hall has been amazing. We go to the third line and this is where we see changes. Now, Sidney Crosby and Justin Stepan were really struggling this postseason. You know, Crosby wasn't that great in the regular season anyway. We only got him because it's like, oh, well, we have Ovi and Gino. He had two points in 16 games. Yeah, I think that was the right time. I know it's kind of harsh to take Sidney Crosby out of the lineup in the Stanley Cup final, but he and Stepan really weren't getting it done. And, you know, call it a bad move or not, maybe we'll miss the poise from Crosby. But, you know, electing to go with the two best Calder Cup playoff performers that we had in Otto Koivula and the returning Xavier Borgo, I think, might work out for us. You know, Koivula in the AHL, 50 points this year, but in the playoffs, 16 points in 16 games. So I'm very intrigued to see what he can bring to the lineup. And, of course, Xavier is one of those guys that we started here. We drop him down to the AHL, and you see what he did in this postseason, 16 in 16. So yet again, someone who I am optimistic about. Tyler Johnson, another random veteran on this team. Not the best point totals, but obviously playing a bottom six role. Only has four points thus far this postseason, but we're going to leave him in. And then the fourth line, the struggling Matthew Kachuk. And look, I know we've played him in the bottom six for a decent amount of time, but you know Matthew Kachuk has had a very tumultuous two and a half seasons here in Ottawa. It's really the only way to put it. And last year, this playoff performance saved his job here. We would likely be letting go of him at the end of this season. But we uh, we may just want to stand like up with them. Drake Batherson. Now look, Channel Hall of Fame, I've been a little bit inconsistent with it at times, and I do apologize for that. But Drake Batherson, if there is any Channel Hall of Famer in this series, now Gino might have earned it off of this alone, but Drake Batherson has been everything I could have possibly hoped for him to be for an option you know, in the bottom six over the past three seasons. And again, he's been a playoff performer as well. We talked about it. All of the uh, you know starting core members that the Sens have in their organization already, some made it, some didn't, some left and came back, like Rudolph Balsers, who has been one of the best depth forwards I think we've ever had. Uh, granted, wasn't so great in the regular season defensively. has three points in 11 games. Good enough for me to keep him in this lineup for now. Intrigued to see how it goes. Defensively, Guliaev, I mean, he's been one of our best defensemen, so he's been moved up to that top pairing with Eric Brandstrom, who again, uh, from the looks of it, is going to be on the outs, which really sucks. But it does, I mean, I'm intrigued to see what would happen if, you know, we move on without Brandstrom, but certainly if there's a good time to end the series, uh, Brandstrom saying he wants out when we make it to a cup final, that's a pretty good time. Jeremy Poirier, rookie season, I mean, he's been great, you know, covering for... A couple of different defensemen that we thought would stick around in this lineup and just didn't. He is next to Thomas Shabbat. And that third pairing, Bernard Docker and Shea Theodore, who, again, became a staple of this defense when we weren't expecting it. The goaltender, you already know who it's going to be. Starcy Kemper. That save percentage has steadily dropped. But if he can post a 920 or so, we should be good to go. You know, it was that playoff run last year with that 934 save percentage that really sealed the deal with him being our guy. With that, let's take a look at the competition. Standing in our way, it's our first and our only Stanley Cup final appearance, standing in our way from the other side of the country, the Vancouver Canucks. We start off 
with Jack Dugan. Eight points in 20 games, centered by Elias Pedersen still there. 17 points. And Pavel Bushnevich. Pavel Bushnevich. Not bad. Really good playoff run for him so far. Second line of Brett Connolly, Shane Wright, and Vasily Colson. A third line of Michael Furlan, JT Miller, and Bo Horvat. That's your third line. Jesus Christ. And a fourth line of Tanner Pearson, Cole Lind, and Boris Kachuk. It's not the craziest lineup I've ever seen, but I mean, you look at the 87s that they have here. It's, it's not surprising that they're here. Defensively, it gets less surprising that they're here. Quinn Hughes, point per game, alongside Matt Dumba. Second pairing of Caleb Jones and Stanislav Svozl. And a third pairing of Marcus Nudivara and Jet Wu. It's a damn good defense. The goaltender is still Markstrom. Markstrom stayed, and he has a 924 save percentage. Mikhail Berdine, the backup injuries to Brock Besser and Mikhail Backlund. Dmitry Orlov is a healthy scratch. That could be the difference maker here. Let's see how long these particular players are injured for. Because there's a damn good chance that we could pull this off because of that. I was wondering what happened to Besser. Besser is out for a week. Backlund a little bit less. But they will both miss at least the first game of this series. So if we are going to do anything, yeah, we need to win. We need to win right here and right now. The 41-win Canucks make it all the way to the cup final. We have the better offense. We have the better defense. We have the better goaltending. But is that enough? That is the question. I don't know if it is. As you see at the top, the Belleville Sens eliminate the Hershey Bears in six. They'll be taking on the Texas Stars in the Calder Cup final. We could be looking at the double to say goodbye to NHL 20. Let's see how this goes. It's time. Game one, Stanley Cup final, Canucks and Sens. Let's do this. First period, goal apiece. It's Shane Wright and Taylor Hall, both power play goals. About as even of a period as you can get. Second period, not even. Brady Kachuk on the power play. Tyler Johnson adds the insurance, which right now stands as the leading goal, with Vasily pulled Colson, getting one back three minutes and 40 seconds later. So we go to the third. Up by one. And Thomas Shabbat scores 52 seconds into it. It's now a two-goal lead. Trading power play chances. Nobody able to take advantage there. But right now, the two-goal lead still intact. Power play chance again goes to waste. Have the Canucks run out of time? The answer appears to be yes. Dugan scores. 2.02 to go on the power play. Too little. Too late. I don't know why it says simulation pause. That's the ball game, isn't it? Yes, it is. That was very weird. 4-3 is your final score. Too little, too late. And the Ottawa Senators take game one of the 2025 Stanley Cup final. Hall, Shabbat, and Brady Kachuk getting it done. Great effort there. And in goal, it wasn't great from Darcy Kemper. It's going to drop the save percentage again. But it was enough. The offense was able to carry the weight and get us the victory. As again, Belleville on to the Caller Cup final. I want to take a look at this Canucks lineup here and see what we're dealing with. No changes to the forwards. Yeah, Besser and Backlund are still out. Two big losses up front for Vancouver. We'll jump into game two following the win. No reason to make any changes. Let's see what we got here. First period. Damn good start. Shea Theodore and Taylor Hall on the power play again. The power play is alive right now here in the final. We're up 2 to nothing. Doubled them up in shots. Doubled them up on the board. Second period. Okay, this is a series. <laughs> this is a series right here. Dumba, Horvat, Horvat, Furland, 4-2 Vancouver. Heading into the third period. Out of nowhere, the Canucks explode for four goals. 
and have the two-goal lead still as we approach the halfway point of the third and beyond. Now, Brady Kachuk gets one back. Eight and a half to go. Do we have time to tie this one up is the question. Will it be overtime? It will not. Shane Wright ends it with an empty netter. A brutal second period leads the Canucks to victory and is ultimately uh, our downfall. That is a rough way to go. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Evgeny Malkin, arguably our best player, has fractured his jaw. Alex Ovechkin is out as well. Malkin and Ovechkin both go down. And that could be it for the Ottawa Senators. The question now is who the hell do we call up? To be honest, I'm leaning Naslund and Flaherty. Flaherty is someone who we're never really going to be able to see develop, but he could make himself a hero right here. Not only do we lose Evgeny Malkin, but we also lose Alex Ovechkin. Two members of the top six go down in the same devastating loss. And now that sets the stage for a very interesting remainder of this series. We don't even know how long Obi's out for. And it's obvious we're just going to swap Flaherty and Nasland here. And we don't have a power forward on the line. Flaherty could certainly be one with his size. He has really good wrist shot power. And then Nasland... We'll change him over to a playmaker, and we should at least get better chemistry there. That is, that's a tough pill to swallow, and that does also severely hurt the Calder uh, Cup chances as well, as they lose two crucial players from within their lineup. Game three, so if it wasn't interesting enough as the third game of a Stanley Cup final, there are a lot more talking points now than there happened to be just a few minutes ago. And the big question is, what is the state, the status of Brock Besser and Mikhail Backlund? Damn, damn, damn. Stuart Flaherty. We are never going to see what your full potential is. It's just not going to happen. We don't have time. But you have an incredible opportunity to make yourself a hero and a channel legend. So we maintain the plus five on the third line. What an opportunity here for Flaherty. Stepping into this lineup... The only other option if he struggles is to swap him with Matthew Kachuk. Which could be done, but won't be done. He'll make his NHL debut in Game 3 of the Stanley Cup Final. We're in Vancouver. Before we do anything, i got again got to take a look at the Canucks lineups here. And uh, see what we're dealing with. Brock Besser's back. Grandlin's back. Neither is at 100%. But you see the changes now. Dugan down to the second line. Ferland Miller Horvat. That's insane. That is insane. So Kachuk and Pearson are the two to the route. Sposal is uh, injured and out long term now because they tried to play him when he was hurt, and we need to hope the same thing happens. We still don't know the extent of Alex Ovechkin's injuries. Game three. What is going to happen? As we now deal with injuries of our own into two major players. First period, good start for the Canucks. Vasily pulled Colson with the goal. Second period, goal apiece, Tyler Johnson and Pavel Bushnevich. We are down by one, heading into the third period here. Power play opportunity, JT Miller scores as it expires. And defensively, we are really struggling to shut down the Canucks right now. Eight minutes remaining 
down by two, and Vancouver is going to shrug off a game one loss and take a two to one series lead, barring a miracle. Now Rudy does score, but Besser ends it on the empty netter. Four two final. And the Canucks are now just two wins away from winning it all. And Shane Pinto is hurt. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're falling apart. Half of the top six has gone down to injury. We are falling apart. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, what can you say to that? I need to look at Xavier. What are your numbers looking like, kid? What are we dealing with? A minus three in three games. That's not good enough. How's Otto Koivula looking? Otto. Not great either. Not a major difference maker at the very least. Right. Justin Stepan is likely to come back into the lineup here. Maybe not. I mean, we tried Richard Pilar before, but he wasn't exactly killing it. Mm. I mean, Rensfeld got sent down, too. The argument is to go with the likes of Crosby and Hornquist, go with the veterans, but I think Pilar, Gruden, and Rensfeld are going to get the call-ups here. And having to make this many changes to our lineups at this stage is just brutal. It's absolutely brutal. So let's get uh, let's get Rensfeld in here. To be fair, I should have made him the center. Let's go back over. Let's put uh, John Gruden in here. Right, back over to centers. Rensfeld is in. This line chemistry is going to be bizarre. And Pilar. Not a good fit for that top line. Better in the bottom six. Which means, congratulations to Matthew Kachuk. You're going to play with Flaherty and Nico. And we're going to see what the hell happens. It is a random assortment of talent as we just throw whatever we can at the wall to see what sticks. We are in a lot of trouble. A lot. Of trouble. We're rolling with Darcy Kemper, though. No doubt about it. He gets the chance. Game four. Coming up. We've given up nine goals in the last two games. Granted, there have been some empty netters in there. Ovi's out for even longer with a separated shoulder. Pinto is out until the 29th, so for five more days. I mean, Malkin and Ovi, their careers might be over. Not only... Uh, their postseason runs here. A crucial game four. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. First period, goal apiece. Pilar scores on the man advantage. Offsets the other goal there from Shane Wright. Second period, another goal apiece effort. John Gruden scores. So two call-ups getting it done. Shane Wright, though, single-handedly keeping the Canucks in this one. We're tied at two. In a game that we desperately, desperately need to win. Make no mistake about it. Question is, will we? Canucks waste a power play chance. We're halfway through the third. Another power play chance. This one goes to waste as well. Five minutes left. Vancouver again on the power play. Our discipline is killing us here. Or at least the lack of it as we go to overtime. It is not a chance. It's not an elimination game. It's not a chance for either side to win. So we'll stay here in Simmet. We need we need one of our big players to step up. Taylor Hall, Brady Kachuk, Matthew Kachuk for the ultimate redemption story. Canucks again waste a power play. Come on, we need this. We need this. Please, Vancouver, another power play somehow killed off. The lack of discipline has been astonishing. And Jack Dugan scores. The Vancouver Canucks are one win away from winning the Stanley Cup. Who are the penalty? Brady Kachuk, Jesus Christ, Rensfeld, Poirier, Theodore, Bernard Docker, Flaherty, Nico. I mean, good God. 
just an absurd amount of penalties. <sighs> Three straight losses. And it comes down to this. I genuinely don't think there are any changes I can make to this lineup. I don't think there is. What can I possibly do? <sighs> like, what can I possibly do? <sighs> I, I mean, I'm looking at half the team and saying I can't trust you to get the job done here. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at these numbers offensively, and it's saying, okay, I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of you. Malkin, we can't play him unless he's at 100%. He'll just get hurt again. So, Rensfeld. Yeah, not the performance we needed from you. John Gruden did score. Pilar scored. Batherson. I sat here and hyped you up as an amazing option for us. I think you're out. And I don't think Stuart Flaherty's staying in either. He's not. You know, people will call this me tanking our chances. And you might not be wrong. Screw it. Let's give some younger talent here who are never going to get a chance to see develop an opportunity. Because why the hell not? If the regulars can't get it done, then screw it. Just screw it. I'm not going to sit here and wait for the team to turn it around. Matthew Kachuk will never play a game again for the Ottawa Senators. Congratulations to this young talent. You all get to make your debut in a Stanley Cup Final. And congratulations to the AHL team that is likely to now win the Calder Cup. As I pretty much have to send down Pinto and Malkin. It's going to piss them off, but whatever. It's just to make sure they don't play in the next NHL game. They might end up playing in the AHL game. To be honest, I'm going to call them up after I go best lines. Call this completely throwing. You might not be wrong. But you can also call it a ridiculous amount of frustration that this team seemingly decided to choke at least at some point nearly every single time. Nearly every single time. As frustrating as that is, third line, third line, fourth line, third line. Okay, one of you guys has to go down to the fourth line. And uh, I don't know who that's going to be. Probably Bremberg. Oh, boy. Well, let's see. Who wants to be the center here? 70, 70, 80. Cool. Mika Vico, congratulations. Huge opportunity for you. DeKaiser gets to be the center here. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, we are, uh, we are completely screwed. Absolutely screwed. I'm going to put Pilar with Kachuk and Hall. We'll put Nico with Balsers and Gruden just to get something different going. Again, out of pure necessity. Like I said, call this, call this throwing. You might not be wrong. Darcy Kemper, between the pipes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Decimated by injuries. And a severe amount of underperforming players. It's time to see if some of the youth can step up and be a hero. First period. Brady Kachuk, John Gruden, and Richard Pilar. It's a 3-1 to one lead as Michael Furland offsets it with a goal of his own. Second period, another two goals. Taylor Hall and Bernard Docker as Backlund scores for the Canucks. We go to the third here in game five in desperate need of a win. A little bit more penalty trouble. We should be fine. I'm going to quick sim this. And indeed we are. Goal apiece. Gruden scores again. Furland scores as well. And the Ottawa Senators have staved off elimination for now. There will be a game six back in Vancouver. So there you go. I will always stand by my decision to play those who are playing at a high level and not just those who have a higher overall. 
we go to Game 6. The team will stay the same. Can we force a Game 7 back home? Or is this it? Is this the last hurrah? First period. Good start for Vancouver. Dugan and Connolly. Pilar gets one on the power play. Second period. Two more for Vancouver. Bushnevich and Besser. Hall scores. We're down by two. Honestly, it's been Kemper. 17 shots apiece. Darcy Kemper's getting lit up. And when all else fails and Darcy Kemper falls apart, the Ottawa Senators fall apart. Call it poor sportsmanship. Call it what you will. We're skating off the ice. We're not watching the celebration. The Vancouver Canucks are Stanley Cup champions. And the Ottawa Senators fail again. At every single point, with every obstacle thrown our way, getting rid of players, firing coaches... Every, anything and everything to appease Eugene. We keep finding success on the ice, and then the big names fail us when it matters the most. The legacy of the Ottawa Senators. I don't know if there's a grand way to end this series or not, but it's certainly ending on a disappointing note. I thank you for watching this series, for supporting myself and this channel. Ottawa Senators fall short again. We should have seen it coming.